comment to start the next session at 4 o'clock and I do not wish to be delayed again. So here is the last small talk of this session and it really is, is something like uh, I think only seven slides, so a very short talk about how far you can really push these union components. And our example here is an instrument in America. It's at the uh, National Institute for Standards and Technology, which is located in Washington. And they have a research reactor where this instrument, MAX, is uh, located. And in here they have their reactor, and then there's a moderator. We then have the weird monochromator, which moves back and forth, depending on the energy to be selected. And it rotates around this point in here, which has a guide. And then there's the sample environment, and then this large multi-triple axis instrument that actually has 20 different channels of uh, analyzers. And this is a picture of the beautiful monochromator. It's quite large and it has, I think, 357 single crystals of graphite. And this over here is the max class simulation, where I place them individually on these aluminum arches. And when you press it together, the arches buckles a little bit, and that's how they control the focusing distance. And they can also rotate each column individually to control the horizontal focusing of the monochromator. And this is simulated with uh, something like 400 union components, with each of the aluminum arches and the support pillars, which the beam actually has to transverse in order to reach the monochromator. And then, of course, all of this enters the guide, which will take it to the sample. And here is our little sample from earlier. It's inside the guts of a biostat. And we zoom out and then we recognize a biostat. But over here we have the back end of the instrument. And that is, as I said, 20 channels with shielding in between. And they have two analyzers. And they're set for different energies here. So that the beam continues in the same direction. Each uh, analyzer pair is actually vertically focusing. So I think there are nine crystals in each of these, and there are 20 of them. So you get up to 180 single crystals just there. There's a collimator in front, and then this cave entrance, which has some strange 3D shape, which I could copy using the simple boxes. There's even a collimator between the analyzers to avoid any background going straight into the detectors. And so the, the spectrometry detector is in here, the second layer. And I got access to the, the cat model of the instrument, that's the green thing here, while the black is the max dash view. And as you can see, it, it can fit pretty well. Uh, and this takes a couple of days uh, fiddling around with geometries and a little bit of Python code to replicate it over all 20 channels. It also has two union masters, one for the cryostat and then one for the kidney, because I needed to have these collimators, uh, which is regular max dash components, the collimator linear that it appears, that's in between. So first we do the multiple scattering in the cryostat, then we do the multiple scattering in this system, where you can actually get crosstalk between the channels. But luckily, the shielding is thick enough that that's not really important. And so here, we, uh, we will see a little video, and of course, this is the instrument in the background. We see the rays coming in here, and I simulated a bit of air scattering around. And this is the cryo that we looked at so much last time. Then this is the direct beam going out and hitting one of these channels that would normally be a beam stop. And all of this is the albedo scattering from the shielding, which is hydrogenous. And I'll just replay this. Because 
there's a few brackets to look at. One of them should be around here. Yeah, you can see it is streaming up and going into a detector channel. There it is. And it's scattered over the analyzer into the next analyzer and then reaches the detector. So you can really analyze the performance of the back end of your instrument, check for shielding problems and so on. But it should not be considered usable for biological shielding for human safety, of course. This is just thermal neutrons. Here is uh, an example of measured data and simulated data on the instrument. And it's a scanning instrument. So this is more than a thousand configurations of the instrument. I, I cheated and made only 500 simulations of my, sim, uh, my instrument but still cover the same area, so there's a little worse resolution. But we still get the rack peaks, and these are actually multiple scattering rack peaks that they weren't expecting when they did the experiment first, but luckily they are uh, also in the simulation. These three peaks are probably crystallized, uh, uh, rack peaks from a small crystalline uh, that's not oriented the same way as the main crystal. So of course that's not in the simulation because we didn't know about it, so we could not put it in. Then there's this large background in the center. This was sadly what I was paid to find, but the simulation simply doesn't have it. So it must be something that's not in the simulation. This was still helpful information, but we had really hoped to be able to track that down. Maybe with more additions of, of physics and exams or uh, texture in powders, we might be able to find this someday. Another thing you can see is that the highest background of the measurement is down in the lower portion, and this is also true in the simulation to, our, to our, some extent at least. So you can sort of simulate the background and get somewhat usable results of it. And that was just the, the quick demonstration of uh, how far you can push this set of components. So I've just shown that it can be used for practical purposes. It will take a larger computer than a laptop, but you can do it. It's very difficult to get background simulated correctly, but at least there is a tool to make the attempt. And I still think even if you don't get it perfect, you can learn a lot about what goes on on an instrument. For example, they would rather have chosen a different shielding material because they would have gotten, gotten less albedo scattering with a lower scattering cost section. So there's things to learn and understand by doing simulation, and I think these components can really help you with them. Thank you very much. Do you want to continue the exercise for more time, or is it? Uh, It'll be the end of the day.